Um, I'm not going to go do a, a long introduction of the Archbishop because he needs no introduction. You all know him. You all love him. Here's going to, I'm, uh, the only thing I'm going to say is people ask me why I do what I do and why I am uh, so trying to, to help his vision as much as I can. The Archbishop has been here for almost five years now, and he addressed significant issues. You all know about them. I won't get into the details. And he has done a fantastic job in addressing those issues. It's not a surprise that we have this wonderful turnout here of 725 people versus 525 last year. Yes. All of you are here, of course, to learn about our organization. But I know, I see it as you walk through, as you come up to the Archbishop. You're here because you want to get to know the Archbishop, and you're eager to learn about his vision and the things that we need to do to make sure that orthodoxy and Hellenism in America not only survives, but thrives. Yes, exactly. The Archbishop will talk to you not only today, but other, other opportunities about his vision. But what I, I like about him, he has made himself very available as a leader, and I've had the opportunity over the years to see a lot of leaders, particularly in the business community. So many of you here have served or continue to serve as CEOs of companies. You serve as CEOs of your own businesses. And you know what it takes is vision, stamina, and, and to continue to demonstrate leadership. And this is exactly what we needed, what we have in America, and we are so blessed that he's here. Your eminence, please. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you, my dear Dimitri. First of all, Kalimera. Que calomina. It's March today. Uh, yesterday, was a very special day. It's a leap year, and as we all know, we have, uh, we had February 29th, which is exceptional by itself, by definition, but it was exceptional for another reason too. It is the birthday of our ecumenical patriarch. So we have a very young ecumenical patriarch. He is aging every four years, one year. <laughs> he is the longest serving ecumenical patriarch in the history of Christianity. Since, yeah, since 1991. So it's 33 years. No ecumenical patriarch ever served that long in the history of our church. So we are blessed not only because we have paid here as a communical paid here but because we have him we have him such a long time what a blessing for orthodoxy and our church i called him yesterday for his birthday he answered the phone and after we said the birthday wishes he asked me to convey to all of you his blessings his love and his appreciation for whatever you are doing for the church for Archdiocese here in America and for the Ecumenical Patriarchate. So after that, allow me to uh, offer you my humble thoughts for this beautiful, beautiful gathering. Your Eminence Metropolitan Savas of Pittsburgh, Your Graces, Bishops Andonius and Bishop Sebastianos, Dimitri Logothetis, Paulette, Archons, Fathers, Presbyteres, General, we are so proud of you. Thank you for being here with your Levendi son next to you. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, I look around this ballroom today and beholding your shining faces, I think of this verse from the Holy Apostle Paul from his epistle to the Ephesians. There it says, Truly, we are his accomplishment, founded in Christ Jesus for good deeds, 
which God has prepared that we should walk in them. This is surely a definition of Leadership 100. For God is ultimately behind every success that we could ever achieve. In Greek, the word for accomplishment is pima. What a rich language. How many facets, how many meanings can a word have in Greek? Pima. This time means accomplishment. But can also mean creation. Pima. Something that is very important for us to consider at this turning point for Leadership 100. 40 years. And what is this turning point? Nothing less than the 40th anniversary of the founding of this incredible organization. As I stand here before you, I am utterly amazed at the success and prosperity of Leadership 100 over the course of the last 40 years. You have accomplished incredible works for the sake of the church. We have seen just a few aspects of that this morning. What are you doing for this church? Chief among them is the support of Leadership 100 for our beloved Hellenic College and Holy Cross School of Theology. Without the investment that you have made in this scholie, the largest by far of all your investments throughout Orthodoxy and Hellenism, our precious scholie might have suffered fatal consequences. Leadership 100 is a potent endowment because to endow really is to empower. And that is what the fund has been doing for the past four decades already. Established by my truly visionary predecessor, the ever memorable Archbishop Iakovos of North and South America, Leadership 100 was brought to life by Greek Orthodox Christians who were true innovators of business and they were titans of industry. They are the giants upon whose shoulders we all stand today. And we honor always their sacrifice and their vision every time leadership moves the church forward. I have said it before and I shall say it again. Our founders may have passed on, but the foundation that they built remains firm and strong. We are blessed to be the heirs of their dream, conceived 40 years ago. As you all know, the number of 40 is most significant for Orthodox Christian and for biblical believers in general. I remind you of the flood reported in the book of the Genesis. There it says that it rained 40 days and 40 nights. The Israelites wandered in the desert for 40 years before entering the promised land. Moses, Moses fasted for 40 years before receiving the law the second time. Each of the first three kings of Israel, Saul, David, and Solomon, reigned each for 40 years. The Lord Jesus fasted for 40 days in the desert, as did the prophet Elias in the Old Testament. And more gloriously of all, the Lord remained with his disciples upon earth for 40 days after his resurrection from the dead. I am sure there are many other examples, but you see the importance of this number. 40 
signifies a period of both preparation, purification, and of education, like the 40 days Jesus remained on earth before his ascension after his resurrection. And in the case where the Lord taught the disciples after his rising from the grave, he exactly stayed with the disciples to explain them exactly what happened. They had no idea even then. So then, my beloved brothers and sisters, we can look back over the 40 years of leadership or hundreds activities and provision for our Holy Church, and we can see the tremendous efforts to seed and nourish Orthodoxy and Hellenism in America. I can tell you that so many ministers and organizations that some might take for granted would not exist today if not for Leadership 100. To quote from the wonderful parable of the sour, some seed fell on the good earth and yielded a fruitful harvest, some a hundredfold, others 60 and yet others 30, says the gospel. And so it has been with the dispersion of funding of Leadership 100 over the past 40 years. There have been many good and fruitful harvests, producing much spiritual food with which the faithful have been fed. Our gratitude and appreciation for the past 40 years will never be exhausted. But what of the next 40 years. What are going to be the accomplishments and the good deeds of leadership that St. Paul speaks of in the letter to the Ephesians that we speak, spoke of earlier? Here is the challenge for all of us to envision the next 40 years of Leadership 100. For my part, after spending nearly five years with you, as Mr. Logothetis already reminded us, I would at least encourage the following. First, understanding that money is a form of energy that allows us to concentrate resources in particular situations. Let us look at the global vision for Orthodox Christianity and for Hellenism in America and frame up strategies, strategies for the most effective deployment of these resources where it will be most effective and most impactful. Second, let us broaden the reach of Leadership 100 as has been done already with the young professionals and the junior partners, and let us guide these up and coming sisters and brothers through a formal program of mentorship that enhances their Christian life and their appreciation of Hellenism. Third, let us look seriously at the funding models for Hellenic College and Holy Cross and see how we can help this vital institution create a functioning endowment of its own so that leadership can be freed up for other ministries, including those involving education, continuing, and otherwise. And finally, fourth, let us consider how best to re-engage the current membership who may wish to commit to Leadership 100 with a further gift, thus multiplying the benefits of the existing membership. My dear friends, these are four systematic ways that we can prepare Leadership 100 to be of even greater service to the church in the next 40 years. And I'm sure that there are many others and let us work together to explore these other ways. Conferences like this are a wonderful setting
to have these conversations and build that future together. Let us remember that here in the United States, we are a very small minority of the society, yet we represent outside legacies of both cultural and spiritual significance. In other words, we punch way above our weight. You spoke of the Spartans general yesterday, so we do the same today. <laughs> we are few, but we really punch above our weight. We're poised, my dear brothers and sisters, we're poised to offer to the society the balance, harmony, and rationality of the Christian faith seen through the Greek Orthodox lens. And we are the living legacy of Hellenism, comprising all the ideals and the values that are the bedrock of the Western civilization on the end of this United States of America. In other words, we have so much to give. If you lose this, this treasure, we have nothing to offer to America. So, in celebrating the past four decades of Leadership 100, and in recognition of all those who have come before us, let us forge together a vision and orientation for the future of this marvelous organization of stewardship and solidarity. Let us chart a course for the next 40 years, a course that builds upon the triumphs of the past and exceeds the expectations that we hold in common. If the next 40 years of leadership are going to be as fruitful as the first 40, then the same energy, the same commitment, drive, and vision with which leadership transformed the church in America must be applied to building our future. I have every confidence that together we will find the path and we make our way to a brighter tomorrow. I want to thank you all for your attention.